We have gathered together in your presence to hear your word and to exalt your holy name, to thank you in the midst of the saints and to exalt you in the midst of your church. Father Lord, once again, we say, let your name be magnified. Father Lord, you have been good to us. You have been kind to us. Thank you for sending your word tonight and healing us from all our diseases. Father, we thank you for your people who are who dare to listen to your word this evening. Despite the societal pressure, despite whatever they are going through, they set all things aside to hear your word. Father Lord, they will be rewarded. In this world, they will have double. In the world to come, they will have eternal life. Lord, teach us thy presence. Make known to us thy way. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, you are welcome again to this Open House Fellowship. This is CGF Open House Fellowship, where we use opportunity to come together every Tuesday to teach you about the principle of mission and the basic element of salvation. So this is actually convert introduction to mission, where we use opportunity to introduce new converts into the work of the ministry and to train and prepare believers for the work of the mission. That is the purpose of this class. Our training is very important for believers, especially if you have little knowledge about the scriptures. It's going to help you to grow from a foundation to maturity. Brethren, we are happy. In case you want to set up your own Open Heart Fellowship, contact us. We will assist you and voluntarily help you to start one up in your area. God bless you as you participate. Brethren, before we start, I just want to use the opportunity to tell you about today's topic. Last week, we looked at signs and wonder. But today's topic is quite similar. We are still under the topic evangelism. And we are looking at the topic we call healing. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Why should you heal the sick? Is it a mandatory right of a believer? Oh, are we daughters? I believe we have to leave the healing of the sick to the daughters. But the Lord says, heal the sick. And so because the Lord Jesus said, heal the sick, we heal the sick. Healing the sick is mandatory for every believer. And why who should heal the sick? Is it some pastor or require conduct or special minister with healing gift that should heal the sick? No. The Lord Jesus Christ says this sign will follow everyone that believes in God. The question tonight is, do you believe in God? And if that question, the answer to that question is yes, then you should heal the sick. The Bible says these signs will follow those, not who are pastors, not those who are evangelists, not those who are missionary or who are deacon or elders in the church. But he said, these signs will follow everyone that believe. In my name, they will cast out devil, heal all manner of disease. Take the serpent by the hand, it shall not harm them. Tread upon dangerous ground, eat poisonous food, nothing shall by any means hurt them. This is the promise of the Father. The question tonight is that, do you believe in God? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? If you do believe, then these signs are possible only for those who believe. This is not a rule or mandatory for those who bear the religious name Christianity. No. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved and you are purified by the blood and you know your life is in right standing with God, these signs will follow you. Because the Bible, why we say your life is in the right standing with God, it's not because there is condition, say, because you are not righteous enough, you cannot heal the sick. No. The condition is because the Bible says to the wicked, what right has you to take my name upon your lips? That means a sinner has no right to mention the name of God. Because even though he call, he will not answer. Because the Bible says it's prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. And because of that, if you are still living in sin, your prayer might not be answered. You might pray for the sick, he might not hear. And the Lord is the guidance and the leader of his people. And I believe he is watching over his word to perform it. Whenever you try the word of God, 
God himself will perfect it. Always realize to adjective to heal the sick. It is not you that is performing the healing. Two, all you need to do is speak the word. You don't need no prayer. You don't need to speak in tongues for three hours before the sick can be healed. All you need is belief. The Bible says if you have faith as a grain of rice, you can say to this mountain, be removed and be thrown into the sea. It will be done for you. So the faith you need to heal the sick is not the faith that is insurmountable. It's a little faith. Have a little faith. Compose with your belief in God. That's all. And all you can say to the sick, by his stripes you are healed. And by his stripes you also can be healed tonight. By his stripes you can heal your children. By his stripes you can heal your business. By his stripes you can heal your marriage. By his stripes you can heal your wounds. The Lord is saying to you tonight, by that magic word, by his stripes you can heal a lot. His blood was shed for the remission of your sin. It doesn't matter how sinful you were in the past. The blood of Christ has paid for it all. The Bible says there is no more sacrifice needed for sin. <clears throat> because Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. It is the Passover. The Passover for the saints, the lamb that was killed and used upon the blood post in the land of Egypt. <clears throat> so that the spirit of death, when it passed by, will not touch them. The same blood is still available today. That is the blood of Jesus. It was shed for the remission of your sin. And that blood can clean each spot. It can wash your dead conscience. And it can cleanse you from every infirmity, no matter how big or high or mighty it is. God has not sent us on the ministry of condemnation. And it's not our job to condemn you about your past or about how grievous your sin is. But the mission he sent us is the mission of redemption. To redeem you back to God. God is in the business of reconciling people back to himself. And he's reconciling all men. He doesn't care how big or small your problem is. Whether you are sick or hurting, he's in the business of reconciliation. And the Lord has committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation. And that's why we are in God's stead, reconciling men back to God. And that's why this ministry of healing is important for your ministry. It's important that you minister the same healing that Jesus. Because if you say it, you know God, you should not deny him by your works. People come to your church, they hear in your Bible, you write to them, Jesus say, heal the sick. Jesus say, raise the dead. Cleanse the leper. Open the eyes of the blind. And when you come to that situation, you begin to move. Then they begin to doubt. Are you sure your Bible was not in the ancient time? Or is the same Jesus you read to us still the same Jesus in your church? But this Jesus said his power never failed. He said all these things you see him do, greater things than this should you do also. Do you know why? Because Jesus himself has gone to the Father. And because he has gone to the Father, you should do greater works. Tonight, may God help you as you begin to do greater works in Jesus' name. And I believe before the end of this lesson, you will be able to do greater works. And if you have not been doing greater works, just listen tonight, buckle your shoe, prepare for greater works. Because the Lord will help you to do greater work in Jesus' name. Brethren, tonight we are going to be looking at our test is taken from the book of Psalm 103. Psalm 103, from verse 1. He said, Praise for the Lord mercies. Praise for the Lord mercy. It's a Psalms of David. So we're going to start from verse 1 and read through to verse 5. He says, Blessed the Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgive all your iniquities, who heal all your diseases. 
So we just heard that word. The Lord is the healer. Do not forget his benefits. Remember to bless and explain glory unto the Lord. Two, the Lord is the one who forgives all your iniquities. He is not a distant figure, Father, that is unforgiven. That because you have sinned, he will condemn you to death. No. He forgives all your iniquities. And he heals all your diseases. No matter how the disease sounds, no matter the name the doctor told you in the hospital, this is incurable, or this name, this cannot be cured, but tell him there is a God who heals all your diseases. And that God tonight is still alive. He's able to heal your broken marriage. He's able to heal your broken business. He's able to heal your broken finance. And he's able to heal everything that is sick in your life. The Lord can bring healing to it. Healing in every sphere of your life can come. He is the master of all physicians. And he is able to do exceedingly above what you can think, even ask or imagine tonight. And that's why tonight we are going to be taking opportunity to study these scriptures and to explain it to you in a language that you will understand. So that you will have opportunity to grab as little as you can and apply it to your personal life. God is not a magician. Don't expect me to stand here and begin to perform magic in your life. But one thing you must understand about God is that if you believe in His word and you work according to His principle, everything He says will come to pass. Every single word are possible. It's possible. People have healed the sick. In my ministry, I have seen the sick healed. I have seen demons being cast out. Every sign that Christ has performed, I have seen them walk in my ministry except raising the dead. And that's because we have never come in contact with a dead person to be raised. But God has done all those things. And I believe that if you do it, he can still do it in your life. All you need to do is believe. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes from the word of God. As I am listening to the word of God tonight, your faith will be built up. And that faith will create ability for you to perform healing, deliverance, and salvation to those who have none. And that is the purpose of this message. May God bless you as you listen. This evening we have a fantastic topic. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. It's a topic. And our text is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1 to 17. Because of time, I will not be wasting so much time on reading, but I will just branch through as we continue in this teaching. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1 to 18. That is our text. So, I start by reading Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, which says, I am the Lord that healeth you. In other words, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that brings healings to you. So, your healing does not come from the hospital bed. It does not come from the physician. The physician can only cut what is wrong away from your body and replace it, if possible, patch it up. He might not even have the spear to replace it. So, but God is the one that can heal him. He can remove the symptom, the disease, and the scar away from you. He is the Lord that can heal. Every other person are trying try and error method. But God is the one that heals it. Tell us that Jesus has went about preaching, teaching, and healing all that we are sick. John 14, verse 12. So if Jesus could do it, you can also go about preaching the gospel, teaching, healing as many that are sick. The report, Jesus expected anyone that has faith in him to do the same. More so, Paul wrote in Romans 15, verse 9, that truly, that he fully preached the gospel by saying, doing and by signs and by wonders. Jesus commanded his disciples to what? Heal the sick. Not just to pray for the sick, but to heal them. 
Many believers all over the world tell how the Lord heals today, spiritually, physically, emotionally, even marriages and finance, because His goals for us is wholesomeness in the body. Because he said in the book of Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good tidings to the meek. So if he has come to bring good news, he come to bring good news to every area of your life. That is the purpose of this good news. And this wholeness is in every area of your life. The body, your finance, your spiritual, your marriage. Every area of your life, the healing can be given. Healing is all through the Bible. No man can do it by himself. If you follow God's principle, God's principle work wonders. If you were to stick a pin in most, almost any page of the Bible, the world would drip with the love and healing message of God. Sickness is one just of the four. But from the beginning, God promised his salvation and grace. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, he promised us that he would restore man from grass to grace. Even in verse 21 as well, in Genesis 3. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, we find that God sees all tears and sufferings. He knew what his people are going through. That's why the Bible tells us we do not have a God who is not touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He was on earth, remember? He, was, he suffered everything he can possibly suffer in the flesh. But yet, he hold on to God. Even when he was tempted, even when his gears was being pulled out by those that hate him, he did not threaten. He was on earth just the same way we were. We have not a hard place that is not touched by the feeling of our infirmities. But we have a merciful God. Who is compassionate enough to be able to enter the heavenly holies of all once and for all, not with the blood of goat or sheep, but with his own blood? He is deeply consigned to do something by walking through a benefit, through an obedience and a willing man. If you are obedient, the Bible says, though if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land. You want to eat the fruit of this earth, be willing and obedient. Be willing to perform the will of God and be obedient to his law. You will not only eat the good of the land, but you will eat the fruit thereof. By Exodus 15, 22-26, the Lord revealed himself for the first time as the Lord who heals. That is whom he is. He is the Lord that heals. He showed Moses a piece of wood as a picture of the cross. He must throw into a, the wood into a bitter water of Mara and to turn it to sweetness. And the bitter water of Mara, of Mara became sweet. The river was all Mara because the water was made bitter. And but when Moses threw a piece of stick that the Lord showed him into the water, what happened? The Lord healed the bitter situation and turned it to sweet situation. I mean, the Lord turned your bitter situation to sweetness tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. He knew Moses. He showed Moses a piece of wood in the picture of the cross, which he threw into the water. And that means with the cross of Jesus Christ is introduced into your situation, no matter how bitter that situation is, that bitterness becomes sweetness. Christ did not die to make you so. He died so that your life can be sweetened. So that your bitter situation can turn to sweetness. The Lord is introducing that cross into your life this evening. And that bitter situation in your life will become sweetness today in Jesus' name. The wood are the picture. We must understand in Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 to 9, God's people are beaten by snake through his own fault, through their own fault. Because they sin against God and they rebel against the laws of God. And therefore a fiery serpent was sent to beat them. But what did the Lord do? Never the Lord. The Lord tell them to look away from the wounds and to look up to the 
bronze serpent, which he has made as a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And anybody that look upon him will never be put to shame. And that is today, God is telling you, do not look at your situation. Don't look at the size of your problem. Look up to the size of and the greatness of your God. And if you look today, you will live. No matter how terrible that sickness is, no matter how terrible that name sounds, no matter how terrible that situation looks like, don't look onto that situation. Look up to the greatness of your God. If the devil is big, think of the man who formed the universe. Look up to him and be radiant. Do not be afraid of the faces of the enemy. Do not look upon the situation you find of hurt, but rather look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Who for the grace that was set before me, he endured the cross, despite the shame. Just look upon him who has endured such contradiction for sin, for you against his own self, that you should not be weary and faint when you have been tried. And remember the pictures of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, which tells us to look away from the darknesses and look to Jesus. Because he told us to look up to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. We should look up to him. Don't look at the situation. Don't look at the sickness, how painful it is. Or oh, this waist pain, how is it going to go? This leg is swelling every day. Don't look on it. Look up to Jesus. Begin to remove your eye from problem. I remember when some friends were telling me about their situation. They see me laugh. And they think this man does not take our situation seriously. No, because the situation is very serious. But I look up to the one who is greater than all situations. And that is Jesus. And when you look into him, you will never be disappointed. When situation becomes so complex, you don't know what to do. I remember what he told me last two years. He said when things become so difficult, you don't know what to do. Don't look upon the problem. Look up to the hills where your help comes from. Because your help does not come from man. Your help comes from the Lord, who is the maker of heaven and earth. He will never suffer your foot to be moved. Unlike chameleon, we cannot look in two places at the same time. We will choose one place. And we must not go contrary to it. That that is the promises of God. Job has to preserve true, terrible, and unexplained suffering until finally he is healed. And double blessing came as a result. Job 42, David says not to forget that one of the Lord's many benefits is that he heals all our diseases. Not some of them, all your diseases can be healed. God is not going to heal headache and leave the stomach pain. He's not going to heal the leg and leave the waist pain. God is going to heal all your diseases. If you believe today, he is the law that he lets. And today, stand upon your feet and glorify God. And say to God, you are the law that he lets me. And indeed, he will heal you. He will heal your situation. Malachi says, the Lord has healed, has healing in his wings. Malachi 4 verse 2. He said, the Lord of righteousness shall arise. Healings are in his wings. And so if the Lord has healing in his way, do you think, he says to you, if your father who are on earth, who are very wicked, know how to give good gifts, even to their children, what about your heavenly father? Will he not give you what you ask of him? Oh, ye men of little faith. You just need to believe. A little, and his healing will come. His blessing will come. He will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord gave the Spirit not by measure to those that ask of Him. Jesus came to do the Father's will. Hebrews 10 verse 9. And what is His Father's will? He made it clear to us in the book of Isaiah when He told us that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. The Lord gave Him an assignment. He has, the assignment was to proclaim liberty to the captive. Sickness is captivity. And that is one of the assignments of the Lord Jesus Christ. To bring freedom to the captive. When you are in captivity, you cannot move part of your body when you are sick. So because of that, you are in captivity. The Lord has sent him 
to proclaim liberty to the captive, to preach recovery of sight to those who are blind, to preach liberty to those who are in prison, and to comfort everybody that is mourning because of their affliction. That is healing. The Lord has sent him for only one purpose, to heal you. And to find different examples of Jesus healing people, in him, he shows us that the, the will of the Father sees in lesson the signs and wonders, the list of places where Jesus performed signs just to show to you that the will of the Father was to heal, to deliver, to raise the dead, and to cast out the devil. Isaiah, the prophet, points to Jesus. Points to Jesus centuries before he came. He must, we must read Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 6. Let us read. Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 6. Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 6. Isaiah 53 says, from verse 4, I read. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrow. Yet we esteem him stickily, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And for his stripes we are what? Healed. By his stripes we are healed. Remember he says the same thing here. By the stripes of the Lord we are healed. Your healing does not come from anywhere. In verse 6, uh, he says, We all were like sheep, gone astray, but we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He is the one that carries all our body, all our sins. We were like sheep, we've gone astray. Every one of us were taken of his own things. But God laid on Christ the iniquity of the entire human race. And that's why by his stripes, today you can still be healed. Every eye's weakness, Matthew says, Isaiah prophecy is for here and now in Jesus. You must read Matthew 8 verse 17. Let's read Matthew 8 verse 17. And let's see what the Lord says about his word. 19, 8, verse 17. 19, 8, 17, I read. He said that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore all our sicknesses. He took our infirmities and he bore all our sicknesses on himself. So the eyewitness, Peter, looked back to Jesus and, say, and says, the prophecy has been fulfilled. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Let us read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter 2, 24, I read. It said, Who himself bore our sins and in his own body, on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. The stripes on his back that he was being flogged with bring healings to the church. And by that healing is what we claim our redemption today. So this healing is not something strange. The only reason why you cannot receive healing in your life is that you don't believe in Christ. You don't believe Jesus is who he said he is. You don't believe he's able to do exceedingly above what you can take, ask, or even imagine. And that's why healing will not come. But if you believe that he is who he said he is, there is no situation he cannot solve. Here is my healing. Our gospel is simple, supernatural, centered on Christ, settled forever. You can see that God who tells us that our healing was accomplished by Jesus on the cross 2,000 years ago. That when we looked back to finding our healing, not in the nature, in the future. We are not looking for healing that will come in the future. Healings has already begun 2,000 years before we were born. 
Now he's making it clear to us. We see Jesus. Believe and receive. Give thanks by faith and rest, allowing the Lord to finish the work. He is not thinking, how will the sick be healed? How will the dead rise up? He is not, that is none of his business. His own is to give thanks to God and allow God, believe in God and wait for the manifestation to come. The healing my healings are like fruits. Corn and orange does not grow at the same rate. So if your healing does not come instantly, does not mean God has not answered you. Give it time. It will manifest in its own time. God healing can come instantaneously. It can come in a week. It can come in a month. If you cut down some leaf, it will take some weeks before the leaf finally died off. So is it. So let God do the work. Don't let your conscience begin to do the work for you. That's why the Bible says, any man that doubts is like a wave of the sea. He's unstable in all his way. Such a man can never receive anything from the Lord. You must have faith and doubt nothing if you must get what God has promised you. The gift for one and the gift for all. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 teaches us that the Spirit gives gifts of healing for sick people. Gift of healing are plural words. Gift of healings, not just one, many diseases. This is not a gift for healing one person to use. Although clearly some men and women have more faith and anointing for ministry healing than others, but we must understand that every man receives according to the proportion of faith. If your faith is limited, your healing power will be limited, but every believer can heal. We can heal the sick. You might think your faith is too small, but did you know that we can all minister healing from the grace of God that we have within our call and office? Not necessarily learning, leaning upon person, upon our personal levels of faith. We can receive it by just believing. Because the Bible says, how does your faith grow? Your faith grows by hearing. Hearing. Who can minister healing? You can minister healing. Great apostles. We can see it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Caring pastors. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 4. Fury evangelists. Acts chapter 8, verse 7. Sober teachers. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. John the prophet. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 21. Church elders. See James 5, verse 14. Church deacon. See Acts 6, verse 5. Ordinary believer. See Mark 16, verse 17. We can all issue healing. It doesn't matter your rank or your professional in the ministry. You don't need to be a pastor or a prophet or a missionary to be able to administer healing. As long as you are born again and you believe that God saved you and that he is able to do exceedingly above what you can take, ask or even imagine, he is there with you and you can minister healing. How to minister healing? With God's grace, guidance, follow the scripture. If you don't know how to do it, read the same place where Jesus do the same healing you are about to do. Follow the same way Jesus do it, and it will work the same way it worked with Jesus. If you don't know how to read, listen to people who have ministered healing and learn how they have done it. And follow their example, it will work the same way. Because God does not compromise his standard. Prompting and helping you can minister to the sick. You can be under the influence of the anointing of the Holy Spirit and you will minister healing even without you knowing it to people and instantly they will receive it at any time. Not just in the church service or evangelistic meeting. You can minister healing in the streets. You can minister it in your home. You can minister it in the church. You can minister it in the street corner. The Lord is always the same everywhere. He doesn't change who he is. Determine to truly 
hate sickness. You must hate the sickness, not the person. You must love the person, hate the sickness that is inside the person, and be ready to chase the sickness out. And that's time there will be zeal in you and confidence to cast away the sickness. Be time to love the people enough to always offer to minister healing to them, irrespective of how offensive because of their situation they may sound. You must learn to love them. You must love them enough to be able to be willing to pray for their healing. Wherefore, because you cannot heal anybody you do not have compassion on. For healing to be ministered, compassion must flow from within. And for compassion to flow from within, you must love the person enough to care about the person. Wherever possible, teach people to have faith themselves, to pray for themselves. Otherwise, lend them your faith. If they don't have any faith at all, borrow them your own, so that you can use your faith to heal them. And how do you borrow people your faith? You borrow people faith by staring up, giving the list of things that God has accomplished in your life to them. By hearing it, because Bible says faith comes by hearing. Why they hear it, their faith will be ginger up and they will look with expectation. At that point in time, that little faith in them can be used to substitute for their healing. That is how you borrow people your faith. Always yield to the Holy Spirit. Don't allow emotion to move you to doing things that God has not sent you. Listen to the voice of the Spirit. Follow the same principle. Principles in the scripture matter more than anointing. Follow principle of Jesus Christ. The same way he did it, do it the same way. When he come to the sick, what did he do? He look up to heaven and give thanks. When you come to the sick, what should you do? Look up to God and give thanks. And when you give thanks, what did he say after that? Father, I know you always hear me, and I know you have heard me already. Say the same word. Look steadfastly in the sick. Mean every word you said from the heart, and command you say, Hear it, and the Lord will do wonders in your life. Ask the Lord to teach you how to pray. The apostles were believers. They were Jews. Most of them were devoted Jews. But they still asked the Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Brethren, don't be too big to ask God to teach you to pray. The Bible says when we don't know how to pray as we're supposed to, the Spirit of God Himself help our infirmities. We go on in that cannot be uttered. When we go on, the Spirit testifies that we are the children of God. Learn to rely on the Spirit to teach you to pray. Especially when you come to situations like healing the sick or casting out the demon from a afflicted person. You must rely on the Holy Spirit to lead you in the right prayer. Because even the things you do not remember, the Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance so that you can use the right word to cast out the devil and to cast out sickness from those that are sick. May the Lord bless you as you follow this principle. Always bind all aggravating satanic powers of infirmities that is attacking the person because some sickness may be due to attack what others can be as a result of personal sin. And therefore, you must learn to learn the principle of the scripture. Whoever you forgive on earth is forgiven in heaven. Whoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. You have all authority. The Bible says, let the senses rejoice in the glory. Let them sing the land upon their coaches. Let the high praise of the Lord feed their mouth. What? We took a sword upon their hands. To execute vengeance upon the heathen, to bind the kings of the earth with chains, and their rulers with fathers of iron. To execute upon them the judgment that God himself has written. This honor all saints have. So if you are a saint of God, you have this honor. So you can drive out the devil. You can heal the sick. Don't be afraid to pray against the roots of the sickness. And command it to go irrespective of the authority he thinks he has. Gather the remaining boldness you have from the Holy Spirit and collect authority from God. Those, if you pray, it doesn't work, don't give up. Go back the next day and complete the prayer. Because if it doesn't work, take your Bible, study what Jesus did when he was in your situation and try it again. When Elijah was about to bring rain, after the, he had stopped praying for three and a half years, 
He prayed the first time, he didn't walk. The servant went to look at the sky, he said nothing. He said, Go again seven times. Continue your prayer the same way. Go again seven times. And before the seven times, you will see cloud like the hand of a man. And something will happen. Pray until revival come. Don't give up when the healing starts to amend. Continue the prayer until you finish. If you can pray, the leg that was paralyzed begin to shake. Continue the prayer until you are able to move the person from the ground until he stands. Release the power of God by prayer and lay the arm of the hands, even anointing oil if you need, if it's necessary. Persevere and persist true to victory. Even Jesus had to pray for one man more than once. Because Jesus prayed for a blind man and he said, what did you see? He said, I see men as tall as one tree. He knew that was not normal. So you have to pray again. So you can pray for person more than once. It is necessary. So brethren, these are the principles we want to illustrate to you before we go to the scripture. Why am I teaching you this principle? Because it becomes necessary as a believer, you must showcase the power of Christ wherever you go. An ambassador is not recognized as an ambassador until he successfully represents the power and the authority of his country he is representing or the host. If you do not represent heaven, how can you claim to be an ambassador of Christ? And remember, ambassador in his personal capacity in the whole cannot do anything. But if he rely on God, he can do exceedingly above many things. He can ever things or do. God is the strength of the believer. Always realize that the authority to heal the sick, to raise the dead, does not rest upon you as the minister. It does not rest upon you as the missionary or the bishop or the evangelist. The authority rests on Christ. Don't allow the devil cover you into saying, what if you pray you didn't get well? What if after you have followed this principle, nothing works? Realize that God honors his word more than his name. God is the one that sends you to heal the sick. The Bible says the one that sent one on an error that one feared. One does not fear the one to whom the error is sent. It is God that sent you. Do not be afraid of their faces. Do not be afraid of the shame the enemy sent your way. Lay your hand on the sick whenever you can find them. Heal as many. Continue to do it until you become used to you. Begin to lay your hand on every sick. It's not everybody you lay hand upon that will get healed at the first time. Continue. If A doesn't get healed, lay hand on B. If B doesn't get healed, lay hand on C. And the Lord will do wonders. The Lord is God. He can do and confirm his word. His word are ye in us, they are amen. He always confirms what he says, and he says what he do. Before we conclude, I want us to go quickly to the book of Psalm. That says Psalm 103, we read as our text. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse from verse 6. Psalm 103 from verse 6. It says, The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Why am I going to that particular place? You know, many of us do not understand sickness is an oppression. And God is help is the one that executes righteousness and justice for the oppressed. So whenever you come into a situation where you need to heal somebody or to pray for situations that you know is not have no right to be in that person in the first place. For example, some people can mean be physically healthy, but spiritually or financially they are down. It's another form of sickness. 
because make them incapable of doing the things they will want to do naturally. In some situation, always come to this place. The Lord executes righteousness and justice to all who are oppressed. Call upon God to execute justice in the life of that believer. And God will answer. Remember, God is not going to do something by himself. He rely on you to do it. When God took Ezekiel to the valley of dry gold, he asked Ezekiel a question, Son of man, can this bone live? And the Lord is asking you the same question this night. Son, daughter, can these people be healed? Your answer will determine what God do next. If your answer is, God, the sickness is too bad. The other one is breathing his last. I am not sure he will survive. That will be your verdict. By your mouth, people can live or die. And by your word, you can confirm whether nations survive or they perish. You can decree a thing and it will come to pass. And life will shine upon your ways. People can wake up terrified. You can combine them with faith, even without prayer. And they will return back to sleep. And when they come back the next morning, they will be as healthy as ever. It happens because, not because of your word, but because God has promised to execute righteousness and justice to those who are oppressed. It is the Lord that is doing it. It is not you. And never take the glory that is meant for God. As much as God is committed to the healing of his people, he is a jealous God. Don't provoke him to jealousy. If you provoke God to jealousy, you may not live to survive it. When people offer strength fire before the Lord, they perish. The ground open his mouth alive and swallow them. So do not take the glory that is meant for God. Realize that he that takes his stand should take heed lest he should fall. You should be steadfast, unmovable, always abide in the works of the Lord. Let no man persuade you to go beyond the principles that are set and the boundary that Christ has laid. The, the Lord Jesus himself said to you, he is not against any man coming after him. If any man come after him, he wants to even become Christ. Let him deny himself. Let him take his cross and follow Christ. God is not against you becoming anything you want to become. God celebrates you. If you can go from street to street, heal them all like Jesus did. Raise the dead like Jesus did. But you must learn one simple principle. He that comes to God must first believe that God is God. If you don't believe that, all things we have been teaching will be a useless effort. Your cry will not heal the sick. Your prayer will not heal the sick. Your noise will not heal the sick. But what will heal the sick you must believe that God is God and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. If you come to God, you must first believe. The first commandment to Israel was, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. The Lord your God is what? One. And thou shalt not make unto the Lord your God any graven image. In likeness of anything, anything you think in your heart and worship becomes an image. You must not make unto your God any graven image. In likeness of anything in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. And secondly, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, and with all your strength. And the second laws 
You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. Every other gift flowed naturally. It's not a body. It's cheaper in Africa to heal the sick than to go to the doctor. Because the doctor will charge you money. So if you believe in God, God can do the healing. And God, let God take the glory. Don't heal for sin. Don't do deliverance for sin. Let God take all the glory. Give glory to God because He is God. And He is in charge. You are not. And don't always rely on your ability. Don't feed that cast when your wish does not come to pass. Relax and celebrate God. Because God inhabits the praise of His people. What you cannot do through prayer, when you give praise to God, things happen. And that is what believers must learn to understand. When you cannot get it through prayer, remind God of His promises. If you don't know how to praise God, read your psalm. Celebrate with the church. God, take your Bible and prove God by His word. The Lord said, Command me concerning the things that I have written. If I will not do it, prove God by His word. His word are confirmed. His word cannot be broken. The scriptures, like they say, can never be broken. He has said it. Jesus said, as long as the earth remain, not a yacht or a tittle or a point or a dot will be will pass away in the scripture without to be fulfilled. So every word we say tonight are proven and you can do it. Just like the Holy Spirit gift is for every believer. It's not for some people. It's not for just some apostles as some church teaches you. It's for every man. The Bible says on the last day I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, not some flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will drink drink. And your young men will see vision. And upon all flesh will I pour out my spirit. The Lord will pour out his spirit upon you tonight. And upon your marriage. Upon your children. Upon your husband. But always realize that the Lord says to sinner. What right have you to take my names upon your lips? Since you hate instruction and you cast my way behind you. If you know that your hands is dirty, you cannot come before God. People that speak English say any man that comes to equity must come with a clean hand. If you come before the Lord, you must be ready to live by his principle. Because the Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. The gift of healing cannot be bought with money. It cannot be gotten because you pay your tithe regularly and give offer. No. A man once tried to buy the Holy Spirit from the apostle. That whoever you lay his hand will be filled with the Holy Spirit. What did the apostle say to him? Thy silver perish with you. Your money perish with you. You think the gift of God can be bought with money? The gift of God cannot be bought with money. The only thing, if you are devoted and committed to His will, you will have it. This gift is not for one person. It's for as many as the Lord our God shall call. It's for you, for your children, your children's children. For everyone that believes. If you believe, if you dare to believe today, the Lord will be would dare to use you for great things. And that is where we end today's message. Committing to you to believe in God, that is all you need. Come to Him with a sincere heart, with a heart full of grace. What use will it be to you not to trust in the Lord? 
Some people say, a lot of you, there is no heaven. There is no hell. Let's ask one simple question. Let's assume heaven, hell, any of those does not exist. And you do what is right. How does it hurt you? But what if you do what is evil? Who do you hurt? You hurt your brother. He does not hurt God in any way. Brethren, that is the message I have for you tonight. Serve the Lord with a clean heart. With a pure heart. And you will get the reward that is meant for pure hearts. Don't do anything illegal before God. And you come before God with a dirty hand. And you say, I try what you said, it didn't work. If you follow the principle the scripture laid down, and everything I told you did not work, call me. We will ask God question together. But if you do what I say, and follow the same principle I laid down with you, and you search your life, that you are right with God, and your faith is steadfast with God, and you follow the same principle, if it doesn't work, we will take the case to God together. I believe in God, and I know what He says. He is more than able to perform. Brethren, before we pray, I want to use this opportunity to invite you to our program. This is Open Heart Fellowship. It's a service under CGF, Christian Global Foundation. We use this opportunity every Tuesday to teach you about the principle. How you can apply the word of God to your life. That is the purpose of Open House Fellowship. It's a non-denominational service for every believers. And if you miss any of our topic, <coughs> you can still get it back by going to our website at cgfnslogin.app. Cgfnslogin.app. And you can see through it and know exactly what we have you have missed. God bless you. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we ask for your grace. We ask for your supernatural wisdom and your knowledge <coughs> to heal as many that are sick. As many that have come to you with a sincere heart. As many that are ready to give up their wicked way and return to you with all their hearts. Lord, may you return to them. Return to them in your healing. Return to them in your mercy. Return to them in your favor. Heal all their diseases. Deliver them from all their difficult situations. As many that are financially down, create a breakthrough for them in their life. <coughs> this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Short. It does drive.